Craving the perfect holiday snack? Check out Farmer Bill's Biltonk. Think beef jerky, but better. No sugar, no preservatives, just pure animal protein goodness. Crafted from premium grass-fed beef or bison and air-dried to perfection, Farmer Bill's Biltong is nutrient-packed, energy-dense, and perfect for an on-the-go treat or a standout snack for your next party. My favorite is the original bison, but the other flavors like the original beef, smokehouse, and spicy chili have me second-guessing that choice more than once. Visit FarmerBillsProvisions.com to grab a one-pound slab or a variety pack and use code BIZBIT10 for 10% off. Farmer Bills Biltong, don't be the two-liter guy at this year's Christmas party. I want to open up education more to the world and make it much more global. And then I want to open it up for like the educators that are like putting out high quality things. So I see like a huge opportunity to kind of evolve like what Duolingo and Khan Academy have built into an even better learning management system that provides like targeted feedback, rewards and all these sort of things to continuously like bring the user back to make re- learning like a rewarding and fun experience. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Santos Hernandez, who's the founder of Emeraldize.com, where educators earn and people are rewarded for learning. He's also the VP of Strategy at Zebedee, an organizer at the Arizona Bitcoin Network, and a cypherpunk at NBD. We're going to be talking about all those things today, but first and foremost, I wanted to bring Santos on to talk about his newest project, Emeraldize. Of course, before we get to that interview, we have this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight, and you know that this week is going to be the Arizona Bitcoin Network. The Arizona Bitcoin Network is Arizona's largest and best Bitcoin meetup. They host events across the greater Phoenix area, ranging from casual hangouts to educational presentations across a variety of topics. Whether you're an expert or new and curious, they're on a mission to lead the Grand Canyon state into a bright orange Bitcoin future and would love to have you. You can find them on Twitter at azbitcoiners or on meetup.com. Those links are below. And if you're thinking to yourself, I'm not in the Arizona area, have no plans to go through Arizona in the near future, no worries. Download the Oshi app and you'll be able to find the Bitcoin meetup closest to you. Now, we're going to get to our interview with Santos right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Santos, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Josh. Thank you very much for having me here. It's an honor. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? More ready than ever. First question is this. When and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, I started learning about Bitcoin when I was working at Bank of America as a preferred sales and retention agent. This was 2015. Um I I wrote the retention playbook and the preferred sales playbook. And as I got deeper and I started taking on more responsibilities, I just felt like something was really off about the whole credit card product suite. Um, Yeah, especially related to like balance transfers and direct deposits, uh, those those offers, which are like zero percent loans for like a period of time. And then they kick up to like a 15 percent interest at that time. And around that time, my brother started telling me about Bitcoin. I'd heard about it before, but never investigated it, never thought much of it at all. Uh, But then he was expressing to me there's something material here. So I began uh, watching Andreas Tononopoulos' talks and reading uh, his works. And then Internet of Money came out, I think, in 2016. It really all began to make sense to me. Uh, especially working in banking and what uh, Andreas talks pre- 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 predominantly about. Um, so then in 2016, I actually quit my job and went down a rabbit hole of self-study with a multidisciplinary focus. So that was like reminding me, a Bitcoin reminded me of how much I used to like to code. I used to build like private game servers and all kinds of like websites and forums as a kid, like a teenager. So like I had forgot about all of that and Bitcoin brought me back to it. So I, I really wanted to learn to program. I did learned about cryptography. Um, 
through like Coursera and edX and many of the other like kind of course providing platforms. What's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish everyone understood? Yeah, this is um, I, I would say earning and spending Bitcoin is the future. Uh, rather than buying or needing like the right ramps, like the on ramps to be able to purchase Bitcoin, give away, you know, private information, uh, you'll be able to earn it much more as like a creator and problem solver, as well as like holding specific skill sets. I think it's better to earn it as like a reward, uh, create things, solve problems and just generally like provide more value then use it as a money to do the same. So uh, which which is designed for. Right. So to pay others to give, donate and like on, onboard others to uh, the Bitcoin network, as well as the, the Lightning network. And because of this, I think actually an entirely new group of savers will be created because hmm. uh, as big global Bitcoin payment adoption grows, it'll actually significantly lower settlement times, processing times, increased velocity of money, and it's much more economical to process payments as a result, many less like people in the middle and hops that it has to go through. So it'll actually dramatically reduce like the costs of goods and services, I think, because of this increase in transaction activity, the lower costs in payment processing, the reduction in risk, uh, and just increasing the efficiencies of payments. So I think because of that, like goods and services will get cheaper. So not only is Bitcoin like a really great savings technology, but it's money and it's meant to be used in that case. So I think like not only like earning it, saving it, but also spending in it natively is uh, something I wish that uh, more people understood and kind of feel like there's like this competing ideology set between like toddlers and like people that are earning and spending it using it as the money now. Before we get to question number three, what do you think is going to be the thing that gets people to start spending it either as that hodler who wants to keep their Bitcoin and not spend it until it's appreciated um, in USD terms much beyond where it is today or people who are currently using dollars and not really interested in Bitcoin at all? Like what's going to be the, the thing or what could be some of the things that get people to that point where they're spending it more? Uh, Bitcoin's native internet money at its core. So I think using it uh, and earning it will likely grow. I don't have anything against like people that I use it myself as a savings technology. And I have a stack where, you know, it's like my vault. It's my my reserve and I'm not going to touch it. It's like an emergency fund for like the people that know about personal finance. And there is also a stack that I have that is available for like my day to day operations. So things like paying people online for work that they do for me. Uh, it's opened up like enormous amount of trend, like basically like an entire new network of me to be able to pay people in Bitcoin and get high quality work from it. So I think earning it directly um, and I think basically like interactions online like you can see examples like uh the nostra protocol that's interoperable with http and lightning and you can see clients manifest because of this on interoperability like mm -hmm. domus as an example or astral.ninja or enigma.io that come with the lightning wallet there i mean you can earn it from like simply providing value over chat messages zebedee has like discord bot telegram bot you can now um do, do more than ever with it. And then you can also earn it from making posts on like sacker.news. So I think like that's kind of what will drive like much higher adoption and usage of Bitcoin. And the really beautiful thing about that, that's not true for any other money, is that like one penny has no utility. What can you do with one penny? You can do absolutely nothing with it. But actually one sat does have massive utility and can be incredibly useful. So I think like as people begin to earn it as a reward, uh, as people like Fountain, as an example, has listen to earn, Emeralize has like learn to earn, where it gives you like a portion of your uh, course, per, uh, the amount that you spend on the course back for completing things. Uh, Sacker News, you earn for making posts, etc. This will be kind of be more and more of like a popular paradigm, not just for even Bitcoin applications, but broader applications uh, in the space. Mm. Question number three is this. What is the Bitcoin resource that you most recommend to other people? I tailor the resource to the individual and what I find out about them. So, like, for example, if they're technical or in product, I like to recommend the price of tomorrow because it really mm. kind of has a technical or technology 
focus, not technical, but more of like a technology focus to it, uh, as well as like infusing economics into it. Really great book. If they're interested in economics, I really love recommending like layered money, like macroeconomics, uh, history of money. Uh, that's fantastic. You could also look at like the Bitcoin standard uh, as well. That's another great recommendation. But I really like layered money because it puts into perspective like con like how did the USD system get established as it is? What's been like the evolution of money and like what's the current pyramid of money? And then like what is the what does that look like for Bitcoin? Uh, and I mm -hmm. think the Nick Batia does a really great job with that. Lastly, if you're interested in like philosophy, uh, Der Gigi's works, fantastic. Uh, Sovereignty through mathematics by Canute. Uh, those those are really great kind of like uh, philosophical books that really open your mind and give you new ways of thinking about these sort of things. So um, that those are like how that those are the resources that I would like typically recommend. Uh, I feel like individuals that have kids and want to like get their kids into bitcoin i'd recommend something by like shamari as an example they have two great mm -hmm. like bitcoin books they have the mining card game so those are like the resources that i kind of have available and like are, are that are top of mind but with emerald i'm actually developing like a curated core set of these resources that i can share with the local community and be like hey you're interested in bitcoin like i have this curated course for you here's a set of like articles blogs and videos that will take you from step a to step z with bitcoin let me know when you're ready for the next one so that's kind of yeah. like uh where, what i'm currently doing and where i'm going so these last two questions are a little bit uh, apart from bitcoin but this next question is beyond Bitcoin, what is a resource tool or idea that's been helpful to you or your business recently? Chat GPT. I know that's kind of like a like go to lately a kind of buzzy thing, but I've actually found it to be incredibly useful in developing like content sales strategy, like being able to execute on it, getting templates, being able to edit and modify it, but have the general structure of what it is that I want to say and how I want to go about saying it. Uh, that's been incredibly useful for me for like creating summarizations from long documents, from one liners, uh, you know, from the summaries and then being able just to come up with a structure right away eliminates a ton of friction. And the, the product, uh, the, the chat GPT actually returns like really high quality uh, results in many cases, too. It's like very generalized, of course, but you can always add to it or like change the verbiage to make it like exactly how you want. So I think that's allowed me to drive like a lot more uh, efficiency lately in like writing posts and like communicating with people. Yeah. Now, before we get to our final question, I'm, I'm curious, what is the most interesting or beneficial thing you've done with chat GPT so far? Yeah, I would say like from writing uh, social media posts for like LinkedIn, uh, articles and then like thinking about like, well, what is it that I want to teach uh, the audience that's reading these articles, mm. creating the outline and then basically having GPT chat GPT construct all of like the content and then just mo modifying it to say more uh, specifically like what it is that I'm trying to teach. Uh, that's been the most beneficial kind of usage so far. Um, just like get the ball rolling. Like, complete, normally as a writer, like you have to think about like what it is like the, that's the the model in your mind that you're trying to communicate. And then how do you do that simply? And how do you use terms like that everyone could understand? Um, that's not like esoteric. So I think like with chat GPT, it like really helps get that process started. And then you need to like think about, well, how do I like frame this argument? Well, first you got to like start off with your thesis statement. Then you have like supporting paragraph one, supporting paragraph two, maybe a, like a, you know, go against it, like kind of like an anti uh, antithesis statement and then overcoming it. Well, you can kind of do all of that really rapidly without having to put too much thought into it to ship more content, ship more education faster without losing out on the signal or the value that you're trying to provide. Now we have our final arbitrary but insightful question, and it's this. As a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? I'm kind of a rebel, so I like to ask why not. Uh, I challenge assumptions, existing paradigms, and I push the boundaries of technology and what beliefs, uh, people's beliefs are about these sort of things. So I like to always respond, well, why not? Why can't we do this? Why can't we try this? What's really preventing us here? 
Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. At Linkster, it's not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com Linkster. Secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting-edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go-to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart. Vellus Commerce doesn't just build. They bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project's success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future-proof your business in the coming age of hyper-Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. Perfect. Well, today we're here to talk about a number of things, but first and foremost, the reason I originally reached out to you was about your new venture, Emeralize. I think it's a really interesting idea. I want to kind of uh, talk to you a little bit about it today, what the purpose is, uh, especially for educators, and maybe not only the purpose now, but maybe what you see it growing to in the future. So if you would just start off sharing with us a little bit about Emeralize and the vision you have for it. Yeah, Emeralize right now is an e-learning platform. It allows creators to create courses and to post them where they can sell them for sats or give access for free. They can collect tips off of like free and paid courses. The primary driver is to help creators, specifically like the educator uh, user persona, make money. Uh, and to focus on the educators that may not have had like the same monetization opportunity. So like for YouTube, you require like a significant number of subscribers to be able to monetize off of ads. Twitch is not uh, much different than looking at, well, like Coursera and Udemy. Uh, Coursera is predominantly for educational institutions, like the, the four-year colleges, the master's degree programs, so kind of like an evolution of like the college system. Udemy like is moving closer. They allow like professionals to post their courses in like a, a wider array of individuals to create courses and sell them, but the marketing that they, they, the amount that they take from their marketing efforts is very high at 70%. Um, so looking at like Emeralize one to make course creation like simpler and easier to do uh, in a really easy to understand way through user interface, make courses really easy to assemble and then to be able to sell them uh, for Bitcoin, which Udemy like Coursera and all these like processors that use dollars, I mean, if you have, uh, if you don't have dollars, for example, let's say you're like located in Nigeria or India, and maybe you're, you're trying to pay with Naira or you're trying to pay with whatever like local currency that you have. And if Udemy doesn't accept it, then you're kind of like excluded from that. Whereas now there's like, we were talking about in the beginning, there's a number of ways to earn Bitcoin. The goal is to make courses like affordable for everyone as well, to be more inclusive uh, for like the basically make education global with the global money uh, rather than like use these old monies that if you don't have USD and you have Naira, well, then good luck. You know, I want to open up education more to the world and make it much more global. And then I want to open it up for like the educators that are like putting out high quality things to make a lot more money. So that's kind of the goal of Emeralize, is to help educators earn. And then the gamification element for learners is I want to make learning fun. I want to make it rewarding. We've seen significant uh, results in retention and engagement through uh, gaming with giving users Bitcoin, like play to earn. Why not learn to earn and to give them an incentive for like completing resources, completing courses, uh, issuing certificates, you know, giving stats for knowledge checks, 
uh, or completing deliverables or engagement, you know, through comments and those sort of things. So I see like a huge opportunity to kind of evolve like what Duolingo and Khan Academy have built into an even better learning management system uh, that provides like targeted feedback, rewards, and all these sort of things to continuously like, bring the user back to make re learning like a rewarding and fun experience. And so part of the reason that I really wanted to talk with you about this is because I've known quite a few people who have kind of gone down the course route, developing things to, you know, share with audiences that want to learn what they've learned. So you've talked about how this is a little bit different than some other alternatives out there. You also mentioned that um, you can tip course creators if you're going through. So how does that work? Is that, you know, for if someone's going through a course that's free to them, but they find it really valuable, that's where the tipping comes into play, as opposed to charging for that content up front or paying for that content up front. How does that work? And maybe also like what have some conversations been like with the educators that have joined the platform so far? That is correct. So I think tipping in general, like anytime you get value that exceeded your expectation, like the uh, the paradigm is to tip or to give a boost if you want to use like value for value terms. So I see it as a way that people can establish like trust and, and reputation amongst the emeraldized community. So you can put out a course for free and if there's high amount of value, you could expect to get some value back in the form of a Bitcoin payment from the user. So I see that like as a way to build trust and eventually monetize your courses after you built a sufficient amount of trust. It's like proof of work. You put out mm -hmm. free courses if you're not a known like creator. If you're already like um, known in the space, like for example, like Knut's building uh, a praxeology course on Emeraldize right now, uh, he will likely charge for it. Uh, but if you didn't have like an audience that you built or community that you built, you could offer for free. Um, and maybe I'm wrong in the assumption he would, he would charge for it, but I think you could make it free if you wanted to, to do that and also still earn some revenue off of it, but you could also charge. And then if you deliver a superior course experience at the end, when the user marks complete on the course, the idea is to then show a flow where they could enter an amount to tip, process the tip, and then now the creator has received the funds. So it's like kind of going above and beyond like a user's expectation that you would earn uh, tips or provided uh, value for free and then or, or without cost initially and then you're looking to get value back so these are this is the way that the tipping is going to be incorporated into the uh, application as like the ux flows continue to evolve right now you can click on a tip button at the course level uh, where you're looking at the outline of a course you can click the tip button on a resource like the actual content of mm -hmm. one of the items in the course like a set of uh, resources is what a course is essentially so there's like multiple ways to earn and you can get tipped from your profile page as well. So you could send someone your profile page. They could see your courses. They could tip you, find your other socials, uh, those those sort of things. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I'm just trying to think of, you know, uh, the the user experience. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, for instance, if you're watching a video, like I'm thinking of a, a YouTube situation or, you know, all on Emeraldize, you're watching a video, just having that a button where it's like, you know, send them a, a 10 sat boost or something like that. It makes it really simple. It's not a whole lot to pay someone 10 sats, but it means a lot on the receiving end when you've you've worked hard, someone's paying you at least they're, they're tipping their hat, you know, and it's just nice to see that it's helpful to see um, for from the creator's perspective. When it comes to receiving money as someone who's learning on the platform, I've always wondered how I'm thinking like Fountain, how how they can pay users to listen. Like fr from what does Emeralize pull those payments? Is it is it um, you know just like a very small percentage that Emeralize is taking from course creators and paying that back to learners? Or how does that work? Right now, the way that it works is that I charge a 2% uh, payment processing fee. And I give that basically it costs me 1% to process the payment. I use the Zebedee API, which, uh, yeah, which my application pays 1% for. And then uh, on the opposite end, uh, I charge a 1% as like the payment, the, the platform provider. And I give that 1% back to the user uh, through the rewards is kind of the idea. Right now I have it as like a fixed value of 100 sats. Um, but I will likely make it just like 1% or 
there could be even like a fund that users could pay into. So you could have like a dedicated lightning address or like LNRL pay and whenever the funds are being like donated or gifted by the users of the Everwise platform, we could have a pool that we draw from and give rewards out. So there's a few different models that this can be looked at. That is the way that it's currently funded and that's how I'm thinking about it in the future. So in addition to like a, a marketplace um, spread as well as like the payment processing spread. So a couple last questions before we move on to some of the other work that you're doing. I, I'm sort of curious to know how people can get involved. Is it just going to emeraldize.com and signing up there for more, more information? And then also, I think one of the things that course creators might be thinking, if they're reaching people who aren't necessarily already interested in Bitcoin, who already have access to Bitcoin, is there a barrier? Uh, is there a barrier of entry for people who don't yet own Bitcoin? Like, do they join and then have to buy Bitcoin in app or bring Bitcoin into the app to pay for the course? How does all of that work? Yeah, that's a great question. You don't need any Bitcoin to use the app currently because we have, I think, three or four courses now that don't require any SATs to get like familiar with the application. Uh, so that's also one reason um, you don't need Bitcoin to begin using it. You can, uh, in order to purchase a course, for example, we have a Pleb Labs Pleb Dev course, which is on there for 150,000 sats. You would need to have your own Bitcoin at this stage. It's very much so like an MVP product. Though down the line, uh, as we grow in users, we will definitely look at adding our own kind of top up with Bitcoin uh, application to it. Uh, you could sign up at emeraldize.app. Uh, if you want to apply to be a creator, you can head to emeraldize.com. Uh, we will be actually opening up creator next week, or actually five days from now, January 29th. Uh, it's been kind of like invite only while we've been continuing to develop some of the features, like most recently payment splitting, where you can share basically whatever you earn from a, a user purchasing a course, you could share it amongst like one or more creators. So then you can kind of do like a revenue share or a course earning share with other users. So now we have the uh, content rules established, the terms of service, like everything in place. I'm going to announce that actually later today and share it with everybody. Now we're kind of in a position where we can open up Creator to everyone. And you'll have like your own profile page where you can collect uh, tips or boosts, whatever you want to call it. You can people can purchase your courses and then the marketplace will be curated. So creators will be able to apply for uh, their course to be listed on the marketplace. And then from there, like it'll be widely discoverable by the platform. I've already posted like the key subject areas that I'm looking for course material on. So if you meet that criteria, you can always reach out to me on Twitter or you'll be able to fill out the, the form and then have your course reviewed to be added to the marketplace. And if not, you'll still be able to sell it on your profile. Uh, so then you can still make money. And this will open up the opportunity to like many more users to earn Bitcoin directly. Well, you know, this isn't the main focus of the podcast, but I also would love to hear a little bit about what you're doing at Zebedee right now, as well as uh, something that seems to be connected to Zebedee I don't know much about, which is NBD. So I, some listeners who are listening to this podcast know about Zebedee. It's a name that's well known in the Bitcoin space. But share with us a little bit about what you're doing there, what you're excited about, and uh, your other work at NBD, and maybe even um, the meetup Arizona Bitcoiners. Oh, yeah. Um, Just share with us your life. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so Zebedee, I'm the VP of strategy, as you mentioned in my intro. Uh, I was hired as the first product manager about almost two years ago now, uh, like the end of May, early June. Um, so I started out in engineering, helped build the engineering team and processes with Kevin and Andre. Kevin's our VP of engineering, Andre's our CTO. Uh, then I moved, We Andre and I broke out, began to form the product team. Uh, I was the business lead of tech and products. I worked closely with him on uh, developing new features, new products. Um, yeah, and then got involved in some of like the partnership stuff. And then uh, most recently, I was promoted to the VP of strategy, where now I still play a role in tech and product. I spend like maybe 20% of my time there now. And then 80% is working with Ben, uh, our chief strategy officer, 
uh, working with partners, you know, looking at innovative use cases and all those sort of great things. With that, if you could just give an overview of what Zebedee does, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw on Twitter today, and maybe this was someone else, but I think it was someone on Zebedee, uh, on the Zebedee team, who was making it possible to earn sats every time you got a coin playing Mario. So like, uh, cool stuff. Um, that's probably not the main thing you're doing as Zebedee, but it'd be interesting to hear just uh, what you're doing in the Bitcoin space. Yeah, that was uh, Chris Moss, Mandelduck. He's a co-founder at Zebedee, uh, one of the co-founders at Zebedee. Uh, he's always doing really cool, innovative stuff. Love Chris. Uh, yeah, he was playing, uh, I think it was on either the original T Nintendo or Super Nintendo, and he, he infused Bitcoin into it. So each time you got a coin, you got some sats. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, in the Bitcoin space, you know, we have NBD. Uh, it's ran by Fiat Joff, uh, Fiat Joff basically is maintaining uh, a simple Bitcoin fork that we call Open Bitcoin Wallet. And it has mm -hmm. a lot of different advanced capabilities. It's available on Android, hopefully uh, iOS soon. And you can do on-chain transactions. You can do uh, Lightning transact uh, payments. So you can send and receive both on-chain and Lightning. You can get access to hosted channels, which if you use applications right now, you still kind of need if you're going to use it in a sovereign and non-custodial way, you still need like capital either to like open up your own channels. You need to be able to pay for channels to be opened up with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, for example, if you're like onboarding to Phoenix, you need to pay like 3000 sats with a minimum like as a fee with a minimum of 10,000 sats to open up a channel to begin receiving and sending Bitcoin. With Open Bitcoin Wallet, you can request a hosted channel, which eliminates these capital requirements, so you can begin receiving Bitcoin. And as soon as you've accumulated and earned enough Bitcoin, you could open up like a standard uh, Lightning Network channel uh, and move your funds there. All in this one application has like hardware wallet support. You could choose a node that you connect to. You can run it over Tor. Has like um, RBF capabilities amongst like other advanced kind of features that Bitcoiners love. Um, so that this is just like one thing that I've helped out with uh, is open Bitcoin wallet. There's also things regarding like hosted uh, channels where you can either like run it as a plugin to your own like CLN node or you can run like a, a daemon uh, like uh, like based on like LND basically. So there's there's a lot of different things that we're focused on right now. Uh, you can check out all the repositories that are available on nbd.wtf. Related to like the Arizona Bitcoin Network, uh, I help run that uh, and organize it. Tonight we have a panel going on. If you're in Phoenix, Tempe area, come out, see what it's all about. It's going to be like a Bitcoin beginners panel. So that's what the topics or questions are geared towards. We also have announcements and topics to cover, kind of give you some of the latest things that have been going on in the space, which is a lot happening in the world mm -hmm. right now. So I'm very yeah. excited about that. We're going to do gaming tournaments. Uh, the first one I'm kind of focused on is like Smash Bros. Uh, we're going to do hackathon, uh, which I'm developing like a lot of courses on MROIs to be able to teach people how to create, whether that be applications, content, entertainment, streaming, uh, how to video edit, all of those kind of things. Uh, and then hopefully put it all together with the hackathon. But it won't be like dev specific. It'll be like very open. Like it could be mm -hmm. creating a podcast. It could be writing an article. It could be creating a video. Uh, it could be shipping a, a brand new product, like a proof of concept. Or maybe it could be designing a product in Figma. So those are like some of the areas that I'm focused on uh, for the hackathon, getting all that set up. And then we're talking about doing like a mini conference for mainly Bitcoin beginners. So kind of putting together all the things that we've done, like why Bitcoin, how does Bitcoin work, uh, how to use a signing device, how to operate a Bitcoin node, and then a Bitcoin kind of Q&A and a Bitcoin kind of panel. So that would probably take up like the full half day. So those are like the things that we're doing and that we're working on. Well, that's really cool. Uh, it sounds like you have no end of things that you're involved with. I'm curious, before we finish up today's episode, is there anything else that you'd like to leave the listeners with? This, thank you for listening. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate everyone's support in the Bitcoin community and com my community in general. It's been overwhelmingly uh, awesome. Everyone's been super kind, giving me like real feedback, um, support, and encouragement. So, Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Let's keep building the builders. Let's keep learning, growing and sharing. Everyone listening to this knows a lot more than they think. And let's like have conversations with people. Let's teach. Let's grow and document, share 
and bring hyper Bitcoinization, uh, make it a reality. Well, thank you for that encouragement. And thank you for your time today, Santos. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Josh. Really appreciate you having me on. I'm honored. Well, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or Santos, you can find our links down in the show notes. And if you have educational content you'd like to share with the world, consider doing it on Emeralize. As always, keep building, keep growing. And until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn stats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today